This is a train adaptive uh, frequency drive tiller with adaptive view controls on it. All of the controls will be controlled as a user from this front panel or the BAS automation system which is in a, another film. This uh, device will control starting and stopping, um, monitoring the chiller, uh, checking for uh, how it's running, and recording any faults that occur so that user can come in at a later time and define what those problems are and fix those problems at a later time if needed. Okay, this, this control panel will start and stop locally or through the front, right now it's set up for front panel control, which is the green bar that's highlighted. It can also operate by a building automation system, in which case the BAS EXT FP button will be highlighted. You can change that by pressing that top menu screen, getting to the display screen that she can change that to, press this and accept it or acknowledge it to uh, change the operating mode. We're going to go back to the main menu. You have the compressor right now is stopped. There's no differential oil. That would normally run somewhere in the range of 22 PSID. Your condenser entering and leaving and your condition of your flow through the chiller. The same with the evaporator. And uh, the evaporator chilled water set point is located right here. You can change that at any time by clicking on that going to the active chilled water set point menu, clicking on that, edit, raise or lower. It also will tell you whether it is active for BAS control or front panel chilled water set point. Right now it's set up for front panel chilled water set point. So then after you edit and change the set point to whatever user defined set point you need, you press the acknowledge button and it will take. We'll go back to the main menu. You have motor operating parameters and purge operating parameters. So if you wanted to look at the motor, you could click on that. It will open and give you four pages worth of information on how the motor is operating. If we down scroll through it, you'll see the amperages, the uh, starter input, winding temperatures. Go down again. We have the transistor for the frequency drive temperature, which is very important. And your energy consumption ratings. This is a way you can monitor your energy costs of operating this chiller. Right now we'll go to the main menu again if you'd like. And you can go to any one of these devices by clicking on it. And it will open that screen. If you look in this corner, there's no second page to this screen here for the condenser. The approach temperature would be right here. Good gauge to look at when you're checking on your condenser tubes to see if your water treatment is satisfactory or not. Back to the home page. You have a purge in here. Right now it is set to adaptive view or adaptive operation, excuse me. And that will only operate the purge based on how much pump outs it pump out minutes have been used, if it's pumped out before or not, you can change that by clicking on the button. Oh, sorry, back up. That's in the settings menu. So you can see how it's operating through that. Uh, you've got alarms, reports, data graphs, and settings on the bottom. If you go to alarms, you can open up the alarms menu and there are no active alarms on that menu. There's buttons on the bottom. They will give you historic alarms and all alarms, whether they're active or historic. So if we place, press the historic button, it will come up with all the uh, alarms that have uh, occurred recently. There's page one of three on this, and you can scroll down through those pages if you'd like. Go back to active alarms. There are no alarms. So we can go to the reports page. And look at the reports. You can get a log sheet on this chiller, an ASHRAE chiller log sheet, a custom report where you could define which items you want to press into there by pressing edit and you can select different items to monitor. Oops, go back to reports. Um, about this chiller, just basic information. 
gives you the name, serial numbers, the uh, firmware build, not really very useful information for the end user. Um, purge operating modes, again, same screen we had before. Uh, the evaporator, condenser, you can all get to all those screens by that front main home screen display. Uh, data graphs. You can look at different modes of operation during, when the chiller is running uh, based on the graphs. So if we were to look at uh, chiller overview, right now we've just got flat lines because the chiller is not running. So it would monitor the active chill water set point, the evaporator leaving water temperature, evaporator entering water temperature, condenser entering and leaving water temperatures. And you could tell through those graphs if anything is, uh, is out, of, out of normal from yesterday to today. You can go back in time by using the minus button to go further back in time or further forward in time to get the, green, the, the display screen bigger or smaller as far as how much graph is reported to you. You can change those items that are in those menus and you could just select the user uh, selected ones that the factory feels that you should be looking at. Um, let's see, which one will we do? Nothing's really running right now. So it's hard to see if nothing's running. So you have no differential oil, no frequency, no average run load because we're not running. So all of those lines would, would uh, climb up the screen based on the load that uh, the chiller, chiller is running at. Useful for diagnosing because you can look at what happened yesterday as far as how it was running because it keeps a running log until it runs off the end of the display. After two or three days you wouldn't be able to pull that information back up. Go to the settings menu. Chiller settings, feature settings, uh, chilled water reset, which I don't believe this chiller is set up for reset. If it is, it would be through automation. Purge settings, manual control settings, display, language, date and time, clean touch screen. So chiller settings, if you press that, you could change your set points there. By clicking on this, you got to that other screen that you saw before. So there are several different ways to get to the same result. Depends on which method you feel comfortable uh, getting to. Um, let's see, date and time can be changed. You can enable, disable UTC. You can uh, do 12, 24 or 48 hour time. Um, all controlled by uh, the buttons, changing times and pressing the enter as it comes up. Let's see. Uh, cleaning the touch screen. From time to time, fingerprints will get all over the screen from use. And right now, you could clean the screen. Use a damp cloth with water. Don't use any chemical based cleaners. Not recommended. It'll go right back to the same screen when it's finished and now you're back in operation. You don't really want to try and clean the screen when it's in this mode because it'll be jumping through the menus as you wipe over it. So use that. And security settings. You can enable or disable security settings. If you hit enable, you can enter a passcode and hit enter and then you'll be able to en enable so that only a few users could get into the screen and uh, operate this chiller. Currently it's disabled. You hit enable. There comes with, I believe this one comes with a factory code. So we'll go ahead and disable that just to make sure because I can't recall what the code is <laughs> off the top of my head. So that's basically how this, front, this lower part of the screen operates and this section right here. This is your display up here that tells you what the chiller condition is in running, stop, remote inhibit where BAS controls will have the chiller offline 
and then auto start and stop. If you press the auto button, which it, right now it looks like it's not depressed, if you press it, it will go into startup mode. Uh, if the chill water pump's running, the condenser water pump's running, it will start the oil pump, which will uh, run for one to two minutes, and then the chiller will start. Once all the uh, safeties are proven and your oil pressure is established. To stop the chiller, you press the stop button. It asks you, do you confirm you want to stop this? You hit yes, and then the chiller mode is stopped. That's all you have to do. Right now, this is local control, so if I hit auto, the chiller would start. And I don't believe we have extra pumps running right now, so I'm not going to do that. Press the home screen, get back to the main screen. Other than that, it's pretty simple. You can enable the custom report by pressing that button too and getting to that same screen that you got in the settings menu. As you can see from the front screen, we are indicating flow on the condenser and the evaporator so the chiller is ready to start. We will press the auto button. So it's running the oil pump, establishing oil differential pressure, confirming evaporator and condenser flow, and starting the frequency drive. So as you look at this screen, you can see the frequency and the amperage start to climb because the motor is running now. Because we don't have that much load and it's cool out, when the graph jumps, that's when the chillers cycle off. You can see by this, as the chiller was off to this point, it started, then it ran, and then it shut back down again for a little while. And that's what that graph is showing you. This is the uh, frequency drive starter. Open this door, see some of the internal components. What we have is the disconnect, which we turned off earlier to get into this panel. And you have to wait probably five minutes or more for this to power itself down through a bleed resistor before you can touch anything in there. Still has power on. You have cooling fans up top, and some of these have one down here. You have two fans in the bottom down here, and you have to be real careful of dust in this room. If it builds up too much, the fans will draw the dust up into the drive and cause problems in the future. This is your inductor section in the back, capacitor section in the front, controls, and then to open access to the drive panel, you must lift this little tab up down here. Now, it's kind of hard to do. <laughs> it makes you reach underneath, but this is the frequency drive of the uh, chiller itself. There's really not much you can do with this. Keep it clean. There's a fan under here. It brings air in and runs it across the drive. Motor connections are up in the top. And like I said before, keep it clean and dust free. And you should have no problems. Okay, turn that back on. This is the oil pump. Right now it's cycling off on coast down. And uh, this is the oil filter. This is the raw oil pressure, which is uh, not really any use to the end user. And a refrigerant pump is in this oil pump, all, in the, inside this oil pump also, that pumps refrigerant up to cool the motor as it's running. Down here, there's two side glasses in the uh, oil sump. This is the lower, and this is the upper oil side glass that have indicators in there that tell the oil level inside this pump. This is a uh, pressure transducer that sends it up to the front panel. And uh, on an annual basis, you would come out, pull this pin back a little bit. You can turn this uh, valve to drain. This device spins around. If you pull this pin out, put a wrench on here, 
to change the oil filter when the machine is not running, turn this to drain, wait 15 to 20 minutes. Once that happens, you'll pull the pin back again, flip it around to change filter. You will then be able to put a strap wrench on the filter and remove the filter, change it, put a new filter on, and then once it's secured, pull the pin back, change this back to the run position, spin it 180 degrees back to run. Once that happens, the chiller will be ready to recycle back on again. There's a drain and fill valve on the bottom, but it's not supposed to be used other than uh, changing the oil. That's on the top of it, you have eductors, which helps bring the oil back to the sump. This is the oil eductor return, active return oil system. Uses high pressure refrigerant blown into this jet pump that creates a vacuum on this line and draws refrigerant and oil from the evaporator and distills it in this tank. This component in the refrigeration system of this chiller is a purge. And what it does is it removes air, non-condensables, from the refrigerant during the off or running cycle or randomly through an adaptive program that it has. This is the filter that filters the liquid refrigerant that's coming back to the condenser. It is a maintenance item. Annually change this filter. This operates, uh, the system operates partially in a vacuum or positive pressure depending on whether it's running or not running. With this purge compressor system running, it will act like a refrigerant pump and use a cold coil to draw refrigerant from the condenser into this drum with any non-condensables. The refrigerant is condensed, falls to the bottom, goes through a drain, and goes back to the chiller, leaving the non-condensables behind. As non-condensables occupy more space in this drum, the co uh, evaporator coil temperature that's in here lowers to a point where it starts a pump out. It opens a solenoid valve and starts a small pump on the top and pumps the non-condensable airs out of the chiller and then it closes and the system keeps running and continues on. This is used to remove small leaks because of the nature of the chiller running in a vacuum. It will draw air in if there's any small leaks in gaskets. If the leaks get up to a point where they're roughly 10 minutes a day, then you're going to need a, a leak repair, a leak check and repair. So if it's starting to get close to that, uh, you use the timer on that front panel to find out how many minutes in a 24 hour period by reading that front panel. This chiller is utilizing electronic flow switches to monitor the evaporator and condenser water flow. These devices right here are that device. This is for the condenser. There's one located up top on that white pipe which is the evaporator flow switch. It is generally a non-maintenance item. If it does get dirty, it would need to be cleaned. You would remove it, uh, wipe it with a stay bright pad, and reinsert it in the same direction that it's pointing it currently, um, and the depth. And that's basically all you can do to that item. There's a, uh, oh shoot, what would you call it? There's a, there's a control in the main panel that we can film next that'll show those flow rates. Next we're going to look at the control panel on chiller 2. As we open the control panel you'll see the flow switches indicating flow on the evaporator and condenser. If the little green light follows below the uh, amber light it will turn red and that means you have no flow the chiller will shut down. We have Disc, uh, circuit breakers for oil pump and controls on this side, power supply for controls, control relays, and inputs. This is the communication interface for the control panel for the BAS controls. That's about it for that. This is a control arm that operates the guide vanes for the uh, compressor, and as these move towards open, it will move more refrigerant through the compressor, which 
builds more load on the motor and produces more cooling effect. As it starts, it starts with these closed and it will start rotating open very, very slowly as it runs.